Good evening, everybody. So today, uh, Marina Park will talk uh, about the database, uh, which predicts the effect of the uh, uh, changes of the free energy uh, depending on the protein mutations. Uh, Marina, thank you very much that you agreed to make this talk. And thank you for uh, please start. Yes, uh, thank you for invitation. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thanks for uh, interested being interested in uh, uh, our project. So I will talk about Prodigy, a database of Delta Delta G datasets and predictors. Um, first, let me introduce myself. I am a third year PhD student at Skolchek uh, Life Sciences Program, working under supervision of Dmitry Ivankov. And I'm interested, as you may guess, uh, in protein stability, which is the main topic of my PhD thesis, and in gen generally in protein design and also in drug design. And um, aside proteins, I love uh, free diving, cold water swimming, and fixed gear, uh, gear bicycles, just in case you need this um, information. Uh, so the plan for today's talk is the following. Uh, the first part will be dedicated to uh, what is Delta Delta G and why we are interested in it. And the second uh, part, ah, and also I will overview the field of Delta Delta G prediction. We will see uh, what's the problems uh, with the field and why we decided to develop our database. And the next part uh, will be dedicated to detailed description of the database and uh, demonstration of use cases. So I suggest that we can get the questions in the chat and uh, discuss them after the first part and then uh, proceed with the uh, database and then also discuss it afterwards, after the second part. So if that's okay, let's uh, start with the uh, Delta Delta G or protein stability change upon mutation. Uh, but before talking about the change in stability, let's talk firstly about what is stability itself. So stability is a fundamental property of the protein structure, and it is defined as uh, the difference between the folded state of the protein and the folded state. Uh, that's why, and so it's by definition, delta G, the stability of the protein. Uh, in the context of mutations, we can similarly define the stability of the mutant, uh, of the mutated protein. Uh, after we introduce mutation, it will be, again, the difference in the folded and the folded state of the mutant. And if we want to define how the stability changed after the mutation was introduced, we um, calculate the uh, change in the stability. That is, by definition, the, uh, we substitute the stability of the mutant and the wild type, and that's why it's delta delta G now. Um, and for from the plot that is depicted here, you can see that the stability of the mutant is actually uh, smaller than the stability of the wild type protein. Um, and that's why when we subtract the uh, less negative value from the uh, more negative value, we got the uh, positive value. And that's why delta delta G will be positive in this particular case, and that will denote destabilization because stability dropped upon mutation. So yes, like this in the example below. Uh, yes, summarizing the delta delta G or the folding for energy change upon mutation or protein stability change upon mutation, or in other words, effect of mutation on protein stability. And uh, finally, why we are interested in, why people in general interested in delta delta G, uh, well, we can measure this parameter experimentally by tracking the unfolding of the protein under some denaturants or temperature, or whatever, and um, using some uh, me um, measured um, the signal. But uh, of course, we want to facilitate um, experimental uh, measurements and predict delta delta G computationally. Uh, when you predict, so the general pipeline is you predict computationally uh, the change uh, instability, and from these predictions you select top, and these top uh, uh, mutations that stabilize the protein you validate experimentally, for example. Yes, and that's uh, 
uh, important for the task of improving protein properties, you can uh, determine mutations that uh, increase the stability of your protein, uh, like stability, like resistance to high temperatures and other factors. And uh, another uh, application is that we can associate delta delta G uh, with the pathogenicity uh, because uh, sometimes the decrease in stability is associated with diseases and we can use uh, the calculation of uh, protein stability change for determining um, pathogenic variants. So that was about the protein stability change upon mutation. And now let's overview how people um, deal with delta delta G data and uh, how they predicted uh, this parameter. So uh, obviously to develop a tool for prediction of delta delta G, you need delta delta G data. And the first attempt uh, to collect delta delta G data was a uh, Proteome database that was developed uh, back in 2004. Um, uh, the great uh, thing about this initiative was that uh, all data was in one place, however, uh, later, it uh, appeared that the database collect um, in the database there was there were um, a lot of errors. Uh, there was also no batch download option in the database. Actually, um, uh, you to to see the whole database, you uh, needed to construct such a search query to display. Um, as much mutations as possible, and they were displayed as a long list of a long table uh, on a single page, and uh, you couldn't download it. You just needed to copy and paste it to Excel or whatever. Uh, not a very user friendly uh, interface, and also it was soon oy, abandoned, and there were no updates for a long time. Uh, but still, this database available by the link that was originally provided. So, and when people found out these problems, they started to collect uh, data sets, small data sets of delta delta G values from this database. And when you see a paper reporting about a new data set, you will see that uh, people manually created, uh, carefully checked, validated data from Proterm and collected some data set of hundreds or several thousand points. And that's how people um, did and actually do till now. And um, also there was an attempt uh, to collect all these data sets in one place, a uh, very bench site. Um, it's not, uh, well, it's kind of a database, but basically technically it's just a page with the links to Excel files with the data sets. Some of them have descriptions and even annotation uh, uh, for which this data set was used, uh, for what procedure this data set was used for training or for testing of what predictor. Uh, it was back in 2013. Uh, and what's wrong with this all data set and data, data in general, delta, delta G data? So these are the examples of uh, the data sets collected from this si uh, website. And despite people manually created as uh, they report uh, the original data from Proterm, uh, there were still errors that were replicated from one data set to another and original errors from Proterm uh, because the data I actually don't uh, believe that it is possible to manually create, create such amount of data um, and don't uh, and not make errors in the process. And also people at some point um, met the fact that uh, for one mutation, uh, one mutation in the same the same mutation in the same protein could be measured in different experiments. Um, probably in different conditions or just by different groups. And what people uh, decided to do with it is just averaging, uh, average several uh, values of delta delta G for one mutation, despite it may come from different experiments, experimental conditions, and thus you got kind of an artificial data and introduced noise into the final data set. 
uh, one of the greatest issue of uh, all this data set is of course messing the delta delta g sign um, as i um, talked in the beginning uh, the delta delta g is a free energy uh, change uh, folding free energy change and some people uh, mean free energy of unfolding or just used to use uh, negative values for um, destabilization because it's more uh, uh, it's uh, uh, logical from the human point of view that we have something bad uh, associated with negative values. However, it's uh, on the contrary uh, from the physics point of view. And there was a great mess when the different signs can be in a single data set or you obtain a data set and it says delta delta g and you don't know what people meant folding or unfolding and eventually the source of the original data uh, was missing or people just deleted it from the original data set or it was not validated and you cannot verify even this value um, in worst cases you got uh, as little as in the third panel when there was just a PDB of the protein that was studied, the mutation and delta delta G. And even the chain of the protein is not specified. So this is with what you work, had to work. And some other problems came from the uh, processing procedure. There were duplicates in data. Uh, the format is not unified. Uh, all columns uh, named differently. The format of data is always uh, different. Uh, you will have to convert uh, three-letter notations of menaces to uh, one letter and so on and so forth. Uh, another trouble is that mutation position could not match in PDB ID you provided to Uniprot. And there are usually no protein sequence that was studied in the original experiment. So uh, hopefully from this slide, you can uh, understand the uh, scale of the trouble. I hope I wasn't too emotional, but just I uh, wanted to broadcast this message to you. Uh, so, yes, and uh, then very recently there was another, uh, there appeared another database uh, for storage of Delta Delta G data. Uh, the authors were motivated by the fact that Pratyomk uh, database collected um, accumulated a lot of errors and it wasn't updated so they uh, manually corrected per term and collected some additional data from literature and designed a really nice looking database uh, but uh, people report still report that there are errors because again i just don't believe that it is possible to manually create such amount of data uh, and what about um, delta delta g predictors themselves that use the data for uh, uh, the, for which we use for development of which we use the data uh, currently there are more than 40 and probably today more than 50 uh, tools available for prediction uh, of the effect of mutation and protein stability however the issue the main issue is that there is no comprehensive independent comparison of these predictors uh, like uh, like CASP for structure uh, assessment, for structure prediction assessments, there is no CASP for delta delta G prediction. Uh, how it usually goes, people develop predictor, select uh, from these 40 plus tools, just uh, several ones for different reasons, uh, compare them on uh, mm, like a limited number of data, uh, limited in, in amount of data and diversity of data, and report each uh, each paper reports uh, the value that favors uh, the fact that the new predictor outperforms the previous ones. Though the list was uh, the assessed list was limited, and um, also the problem that the data set for assessment uh, are mm, there is data leakage usually uh, that uh, proteins in the test set are similar to the proteins that were used in the train set. It is not uh, always properly addressed. Um, as for the performance of predictors, uh, so they are not bad, not excellent. Uh, on the right side, you can see 
uh, one of the recent studies uh, that assessed uh, predictors on the data set that was derived again from Hatorm, and you see that they are on direct mutations, it's the second uh, highlighted column, uh, their performance doesn't uh, exceed uh, 0 0.5 of Pearson correlation with the experimental data. However, if we take another data set that has completely different origin uh, from the recent uh, um, mega data set that uh, uh, that uh, comprises uh, several hundred thousand mutations from a single uh, experimental study. We see that the performance of uh, even old predictors is not that bad, better than when you assess it on uh, the old data. So to address all these issues, we need independent comparison um, on leakage-free data sets. And this is not done yet. Uh, finally, uh, there is another database that collects um, uh, its uh, difference uh, between this database and the previous ones is that it is not only um, database of Delta Delta G data, but also DDG data sets that is uh, uh, more relevant. Uh, since people usually work, mostly work with data sets, but not the whole uh, bunch of data points available. Uh, however, I can't uh, comment much on the uh, advantages or disadvantages. Uh, I initially thought that there is no opportunity to download the data set. There is just uh, um, short, brief information about the data set, but no option to download. But when I prepare the slide, I uh, notice a small button to download SQL file, but wasn't able to open it today. So not sure uh, whether we, there are data sets available there or not. Uh, but as I understood correctly, there were, there is annotation of each data point um, occurrence in, um, in the data set, but not data set themselves. Anyway, uh, summarizing uh, the field of delta delta G prediction. What problems we have there? So first of all, there is no primary uh, database of data. And this means that researchers that obtain experimental data cannot uh, upload from first hand uh, data to the database. It's all compiled from uh, by another people and people eventually will make mistake anyway. I just don't believe it is possible. So we will always have errors. Uh, another issue is that we have many Delta Delta G data sets and the problem is that there are many of them uh, and they and you will have to really track them uh, manually to follow papers, to follow the compilation of a new data set. And also you have to struggle with processing procedure with reviewing the uh, matching positions of mutations, the signs, et cetera. And uh, as for Delta Delta G predictors, there are also many of them. And to compare uh, honestly and unbiasedly your predictor, uh, you will have to collect uh, papers to read them uh, very carefully and to follow um, many predictors that uh, are developed uh, because there is no one place for them. And it is uh, really hard to conduct fair comparison of them because there are many of them. And it is hard to understand um, what data set was used for training of uh, this or that predictor and to compile independent set. And what can be solutions to these problems? So the solution uh, to the first problem is obviously to make such a database where researchers can uh, firsthand upload their data without people in the middle who read their papers and uh, um, uh, upload data with errors. Um, as for the second and the third, uh, the solution might be to store all data sets and predictors in one place in a unified format with you, you would agree on the sign of Delta Delta G, check matching positions uh, in uh, structure and sequence and as for predictors uh, to annotate 
on what training and testing uh, what training and testing sets were used for development of these predictors and this will have to uh, this, this will help to compile leakage free data sets uh, for fair assessment so and um, by developing prodigy we addressed the two um, most two issues uh, for as for data sets and predictors we don't deal with the uh, first problem because um, just because um, it's kind of stands independently and uh, we decided to address uh, the situation that we have with many data sets and predictors to deal with this side of uh, field of the delta delta g prediction uh, next i was going to uh, talk in details about uh, prodigy at this point we probably can if there are questions discuss them or if not we can proceed with the prodigy uh, so colleagues uh, does any have any questions uh, so maybe I'll allow you to unmute yourself. So you are welcome to ask the questions either by voice or write them in the chat, uh, what is convenient for you. Um, so I ask a question. So uh, this G, what is its uh, kind of biological or, or you know, physical sense? This what are we, free energy, what is, what is it? Uh, Ah, uh, so Kulesh uh, will try to give a short answer. Uh, well, uh, probably like this. So uh, if you uh, predict that mutation is uh, destabilizing, that probably uh, the protein will not fold. This, if this mutation, if if this amino acid will be in this position, uh, we might expect um, such. Uh, if, if we talk about the biological context, uh, the practical one, if I understood the question correctly. Okay, so um, it's a kind of we have. We know, do we know some? Examples for this that uh, there, is, there are such uh, destabilizing mutations which uh, change the ability of the protein to fall. Well, we have databases of such uh, data with annotation of what mutations are destabilizing and uh, stabilizing. Most most mutations are destabilizing. It's another problem of uh, delta delta G data because uh, well, proteins designed by nature to be uh, to be fine. That's why they are. Uh, they exist and fold actually and that's why it's really hard to design to find these such mutations that will uh, greatly increase stability because proteins are already okay with what they have and that's why in the data sets are uh, mostly about destabilizing mutations that will of course influence uh, uh, the task uh, of prediction of the algae when you have unbiased data set towards destabilizing mutations. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nikita, if you have a question, uh, you can unmute yourself. Just, uh... Yes, yeah, uh, I have a question. Uh, does uh, this information can, can give us like a binary result, protein is folded or unfolded, or, or may we track the sum like process uh, where the protein is totally unfolded, partially folded, and fully folded. Uh, and maybe this is question related to the, some evolutionary data, so we can track which mutations were accumulated during the evolution. And uh, with this information, do we can imagine how the stability of protein evolved? Mm, well, there are two tasks that uh, you mentioned. So the uh, one thing is just to predict uh, whether the stability will decrease, increase or not. And the second is the tracking of the folding process. This is uh, just a separate task, uh, the separate uh, problem, let's say. Um, 
Yes. So, yeah, um, about the second problem. Can we use this information? Well, for that the delta delta um, G. Not exactly familiar how people uh, uh how people track uh, how people use whether they use it directly for tracking the process probably uh, uh probably yes but uh yes uh, actually yes when you uh, have a bunch of mutations and you track protein folding and unfolding and uh, that's how actually we got this data because some people study the folding of proteins and uh, actually uh, for them it's, it's for the uh, experimental guys for researchers of the protein folding uh, this delta delta g is kind of a secondary information uh, that we use primarily uh, so they obtain this delta delta g's uh, delta delta g values and as the result of the uh, study of the process and but we are not interested we i mean researchers of uh, the developers of delta delta g tools we are not interested on in whether they uh, about the process we just interested in these values so yes like this oh, okay i see thanks thank you any other questions suggestions comments whatever okay anyway if you have a question so don't hesitate to write it in the chat or raise your hand uh, so maybe we can continue I mean, the okay part. let's proceed uh so yes we address these problems that i talked about and we developed prodigy for that and uh, so this is the database of predictors and data sets and this is designed for uh, developers, assessors, and users of tools for predicting the effect of protein uh, uh, for, of mutation on protein stability. And what are the features of our database? So, firstly, uh, of course, we provide access to delta delta G datasets uh, and uh, for, for training and testing uh, popular datasets that people collected, starting from Proterm, and you can either as a developer, download a ready-to-use uh, data set for training or testing, or compile your own based on filtering uh, of, all, of data available on the website. Uh, secondly, we provide data for assessment of data sets. Uh, firstly, you can download, again, as previously, ready-to-use data sets, or we provide the functionality to find overlaps between data. We um, uh, we provide utilities that uh, allows to uh, define what proteins in the uh, test set are similar to the proteins in the train set uh, based um, on the threshold of protein sequence identity. And uh, finally, we provide a list of popular delta delta J predictors with a detailed description of parameters of development procedure and uh, what is important, annotation of the data set uh, that these predictors used for training and testing. So let's uh, go um, on. Um, how, how many proteins do you have in the database? Uh, proteins, uh, well, we can check. I don't remember by heart, but more than five. Ah, I, I, I have it somewhere written about it was more than 600 uh, proteins, as far as I remember. 600 uh, proteins? Yes. And uh, how many mutations? Uh, around 500,000 uh, mutations. That's because of the big data set, uh, this mega data set that we uh, published. And the first database is published this data set. Uh, we will talk about it in more details. I will probably mention it further. Okay, so uh, let's go through each feature in details. So as for the data sets, on the data sets page, you can uh, check the list of uh, ready to use um, data sets. You can select and download any of it. If you have some data set in mind, you can search for it in the search field 
or if you search for data set with particular features, you can use filters to um, select the data set of interest by uh, its size, number of proteins, type of mutation source, whether it's originated from Proteorum or whether it's compilation of several data sets, etc. And uh, what is important, each data set has annotation uh, for what, uh, for which predictor it was used for training or testing, this annotation is provided. And yes, you can download data sets, of course, or select all and download all of them. Um, if you go to the uh, data sets page, you will see that um, there is information about the source of this data set, uh, basic statistics uh, on the uh, types of mutations and the distribution of delta, delta G values and the data set itself, and the of course opportunity to download it. Uh, if you don't when you download the data set, you obtain such a table tab separated. And uh, apart from the basic information that is was originally there, that is usually PDB ID, chain, mutation, uh, experimental data, um, experimental conditions if available, uh, delta delta G. We also provide information, detailed information about the protein, such as uniprot, the name of the protein, etc. And what is important, we checked the, that the mutation in PDB indeed matched the structure. If not, we corrected them as well as matching position in the sequence. And uh, we also provide the sequence itself, the wild type sequence uh, and the um, sequence of the muted, mutant. If uh, there were some comments to the original data set or there were comments from our site uh, about the processing of data, we uh, provide them in notes. And the detailed procedure on the data processing we provide on our GitHub. And um, in the same data sets page, you can select two data sets and find, find overlaps between them. So uh, for instance, uh, you can imagine you want to uh, use a popular assessment set that is SIM for assessment of uh, popular de Delta Delta G predictor Foldex that was trained uh, not trained, but it used uh, this data set 339 to derive weights for its energy function. And uh, for unbiased assessment, you need to exclude from SCM proteins that are similar to Foldex proteins. And you select these two data set uh, on the data sets tab. And by default, it's 25% of sequence identity. And the utility uh, defines uh, how much data overlaps. So uh, it means that there are two proteins in SCM that are similar to proteins in Foldex uh, by more than 25% of sequence identity, but you can uh, set your own threshold and uh, also, of course, download the data set without overlaps uh, or the list of overlapping proteins. Um, and actually, uh, there is a popular test set that is P53, uh, widely used for testing, uh, for assessment of predictors. And uh, the most uh, widely used train set for uh, predictors is 2648. And actually, uh, P53 uh, is uh, completely similar to the this training data set, meaning that it is uh, uh, biased to use it for assessment of uh, predictors that were trained on 2648. Uh, of course, when you have a bunch of data sets in the database, you by default obtain a data set of Delta Delta G data. And you can uh, compile your own data set using a uh, search field or filters, applying filters to data. And finally, uh, we have a list of popular predictors. Again, you can uh, search for the one you're interested in or use filters to, um, to select uh, the one that fits your expectations. Uh, based on the uh, type of input uh, structure or sequence uh, uh, for prediction. The algorithm the predictor is based on the access, whether standalone server and other parameters. Uh, also, so, so about these predictors, uh, it's uh, how is it 
you have stored the results of the prediction or it's no it's just a list it's just a list of available predictors with detailed description of uh the development procedure of uh, this their specification and the access link uh for instance here you can go to the uh page where you can download this predictor um and uh, or if it's uh, available as server online you can go uh, to the server and predict uh, there so it's nothing to download here uh, just a list of uh, predictors but, do, do you have the predictions themselves results of the uh, no but we are about to implement it uh, i will talk about it in the future plans but yes we are uh, we definitely want to introduce this uh, feature okay thank you uh yes detailed uh, description of predictors again annotation of the data sets that they use for training and testing and uh, access link download or um, the web server and of course there is about page uh yes ah, here 800 proteins and 600 k mutations uh, where you can check um, uh, use cases uh, with videos and uh, link to github so uh, while we are in the process of writing manuscript, if you used, I encourage you to use our database, of course, you can cite the, uh, the database just as the website. Uh, and probably I can now go to the website and uh, check and show some other examples of usage. So imagine you are, uh, a wet biologist or whatever you have a protein of interest uh, that you want for instance to stabilize to increase its thermal stability and you need before introducing uh, all possible mutations and spend time on it you want to firstly computationally predict uh, what mutations will be stabilizing and you want and you go to the database and search for predictor either here or on this tab you go to predictors and for instance, you are interested in the most fresh predictors because probably they use the latest technologies and you can uh, filter the predictors, sort them by year and the first one will be the fresh ones. And probably you don't want to um, spend time on installation and you just want online solutions. That's why you go and uh, select that you want server solutions and from this uh, uh, predictors, you select uh, the one that you liked and uh, uh, check the link to access them and make predictions. Uh, in turn, if you are a developer of predictor, you can uh, and you want to assess, compare your predictor with other uh, with others, you can check uh, what uh, training set was used for development of uh, predictors and for instance you see that uh, uh, again 2648 was used for development of this predictor and now you will uh, have to compile an independent set to exclude mutations to exclude proteins in uh, your data set that are similar to the proteins in 2648 and you can go to the data sets and select for instance uh, the data set from which you want to uh, compile a validation set. For instance, you want to uh, be your data set as to go to have my, as much proteins as possible for like, uh, uh, unbiased assessment, for comprehensive assessment. Again, you can select uh, the number of um, proteins in the data set or just sort by the number of proteins. And you see that there is this mega data set that has uh, the largest number of proteins and you select it and uh, then you select the 2648 data set and uh, you can check uh, how they, uh, this uh, data, set, data sets overlap. And it appears that uh, 177 proteins in the mega data set uh, are similar by more than 25% to the 2648. And you can download the data set without overlaps and it will be very heavy, I will stop downloading, uh, something like that. And, and, and. Uh, 
uh, that was about the database. And uh, as for our next step, as was already mentioned, uh, we want to implement uh, some new features that uh, will be connected with the uh, comparison of tools, namely with the availability of predictions for predictors, predictions for predictors, yes. Uh, also, despite we released the data, uh, the database, it's still, uh, uh, it's still there, um, there's much to improve uh, from like small bugs uh, to some, uh, to, and to, add, to add in more data, more data sets and more predictors and implementing additional filters. Uh, so we uh, are on it. And uh, finally, I wanted to share some of my experience while I was developing, uh, we were developing this data set, uh, the database, uh, what worked for me. So these are advice if you want to uh, create a service that will solve, indeed solve people's problems, uh, problems of researchers that will help researchers uh, if you want your service to leave after you graduate, if you uh, want it uh, to be, uh, if you want it to uh, really help people uh, apart from just having a publication, this advice probably will help you. So the first thing is to define the problem and solution uh, because uh, I, my mistake was is that uh, I was aware of all these problems uh, and I firstly didn't define solution correctly uh, our first concept was similar to that that fire pro db has we wanted to annotate data by the occurrence in this or that data set but actually this is firstly technically not possible because of this averaging of uh, data and errors and secondly it actually doesn't help to solve the problem of independent comparison because Okay, you have annotation of uh, mutations that are present in these data sets, but you still will have to, uh, you have, you can exclude it, but you still have to assemble an independent data set. And that's why the solution doesn't match the problem. So uh, validate your solution. Uh, next thing is to make prototypes. Um, don't, probably it's a good uh, practice uh, to firstly make some mockups or the scripts without graphical interface and to show it to people and ask whether it's fine, whether they find it useful, whether it solves the problem, uh, rather than to try make from scratch to the very end finished fully, uh, uh, fully complete concept uh, from the first time, uh, probably it's better to make prototypes in trade. And again, if you aim to solve pe uh, people's problem, you need to collect the feedback from them uh, because firstly, it's very helpful. And secondly, that's because uh, people will use it, not only you. And uh, that's why you need to get uh, uh, feedback to uh, check what works, what doesn't work, what can be improved and so on and iterate, change the prototype, make new prototype, get feedback and so on. And uh, the last one will be practical, where to find developers, because of course uh, I didn't create this the website itself by myself. These uh, were full stack developers and um, I found them uh, from hackathons community. Uh, in Russia, we will call them hackathonshiki. And uh, what is uh, what are their advantages uh, compared to just uh, regular programmers that will you will hire on I don't know Blastim or HH? Uh, they are trained to solve problems uh, in a short time efficiently. Uh, that is the definition of what you do in hackathon, right? And uh, more important, they are motivated not only by money you pay them, but if the task is interesting for them, they're extremely inspired, motivated, and they will do it very nicely. Uh, so probably you can find some uh, in the Russian hackers community or some other communities. So uh, that's all from my side. Uh, thanks for being interested in the database. If you have uh, any suggestion, comments, or if you want to be 
to give to give interviews with the detailed feedback on our service, uh, uh, please contact uh, me by email. Uh, also, want to advertise my Telegram channel. Um, I post updates on the uh, database there, and also I post sometimes some useful stuff on bioinformatics. Not that often, but if I will have more subscribers, probably I will be uh, I will will feel obliged to post more often. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Probably we can now discuss. Oh, thank you very much, Marina. Nice talk. Okay, colleagues, uh, do you have questions or suggestions or comments? So now uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, ask a question by voice or write it in the chat. Up to you. So don't hesitate. Uh, any questions, comments, suggestions? Okay, Olga, maybe you have some questions, suggestions, comments. Um, so, can, can you give a more details about P53? So, P53 is the, the most studied gene, uh, probably. So, the, the the yeah, greatest the, number of the citations, yeah, the, and it's very important in the council. So I guess you know. Yes, yeah, it's of interest for because of association with the cancer, right? With the destabilizing, uh, with the mutations that uh, are pathogenic, uh, and there is a popular data set uh, that was compiled for the uh, yes for information about the change of stability. Upon these mutations, however, uh, there are more data on the mutations that actually are about functionality and pathogenicity. There are much larger data sets on this uh, protein. However, in the if you are interested directly in the delta delta G values, there are available forty two in this data set concretely. Or probably you can collect some more mutations, that no, but not that much in the Praterm or Termomute DB. Uh, yes. Okay. The, about uh, so machine learning and predictions. So have you tried to, to make some models? Uh, have you made some experiments? Because uh, it should be quite simple, but if you have this embeddings, then just yes, yes, you know. and this is what people do, and we are not. Uh, we are, we are also did it, and just recently, and we have manuscript on uh, by archive, and we are now in process of uh, submitting it, uh, and uh, we used uh, ESM embeddings. Uh, and we used the, this mega data set for training and we outperformed <laughs> as always it uh, appears uh, in all uh, papers that report the new predictor uh, the previous solutions uh, well on the new data set we were uh, the, the subset that is uh, not similar to the training set we outperform uh, all predictors and on all data, it's not shown here in the right, but uh, we were comparable, but we did not uh, beat this uh, kind of mysterious threshold of 0 0.5 uh, on this old data. Uh, seems uh, it's the, the most we can get from this uh, noisy error prone uh, uh, data from Praterm, or I don't know but uh, other predictors perform uh, not better than us, but still uh, great uh, on a completely diff data of completely different origin. Yes. And, uh, so what was the model you use in Beijing and some machine learning model upon that? Uh, we use kind of uh, CMEs network for to account for the Antisymmetry property of the prediction that is uh, that the forward mutation should be equal to that uh, to the reverse mutation, but with the opposite sign, and uh, used TSM embeddings. This uh, 
ESM2 embeddings for protein uh, representation and for uh, not only protein, but the representation of the uh, mutations in the concrete position, the direct and the reverse one. And uh, appeared, uh, and it appears that uh, this uh, works. And we also investigated whether, um, well, probably it's uh, a topic for <laughs> another seminar. Uh, we investigated the why we what is the reason for success, uh, whether it's a model, whether it's embeddings, whether it's uh, uh, what what was the reason. And it seems here is the data as well uh, depicted that on old data that is uh, sparse and the it comes from different experiments, uh, we were uh, comparable with other methods. So probably data plays some role, but not that much as we would expect. Uh, we uh, we expected that performance will more dramatically drop if we use this sparse data, but seems ESM embeddings and just uh, nicely designed neural networks uh, do the thing, even with sparse data. Can you comment what, what do you mean by uh... A forward notation, backward notation. You say the opposite sign. What does it mean? Uh, yes, uh, there is a fundamental property of antisymmetry of um, of delta delta G, meaning that if you mutate uh, phenylalanine to threonine, the effect is three point five. Uh, imagine, and if you mutate threonine to phenylalanine, the effect should be minus three point five. So this is uh, called anti-symmetry property of delta-delta uh, uh, G. And uh, people, uh, when first, the very first predictors, they didn't account for this property and they were biased towards forward mutation. And it appeared that when you calculate uh, the reverse mutation, it is not uh, equal to the forward with the minus sign. So the forward plus reverse were not equal to uh, zero. And uh, to account for this, you need to at least double your data set with the reverse mutations. So you double your data set, multiply by minus, minus one, and you have a, a doubled data set symmetrized. So this is a must. Uh, and uh, th this property, it's, uh, uh, I don't know, what is it? It's kind of axiom or it was, and, and so does it, it depend on the pro by, protein? By does it depend on the protein or it's uh, for any protein? It's the same? No, it's just for, for, for everything. <laughs> yes, the property of free. And uh, is there any explanation for that? uh just by uh, for another lecture of protein physics uh that's just the intrinsic property of yeah. actually can, can i uh, yes yes uh, yes sure Dmitry. yeah so actually it is the 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 uh, consequence of uh that stuff that uh, free energy is a state function, so uh, it uh, depends only on the coordinates. And this means, uh, so if you, for example, go from point one to point two in some landscape, and uh, the difference of heights is uh, one meter, for example, then if you go back, then you the change of heights will be minus one, right? Yes. So if you go from one point, so here, if you uh, if you just write down a couple of more uh, lines, you will see that immediately. For example, delta G mutant, what is that? Uh, <clears throat> delta G mutant, it is G folded <clears throat> mutant minus G unfolded mutant. Uh, and uh, do delta G wild type, it is G folded wild type minus G unfolded wild, wild type, right? Mm -hmm. And if you uh, calculate the delta delta G for uh, 
forward mutation, it will be delta G mutant minus delta G wild type. And for backward mutation, you will have delta delta G equals delta G wild type minus delta G mutant, right? Yes. And so they are just opposite to each other because one is mutant minus wild type and the other is wild type minus mutant. And if you sum them up, they must give you zero. Uh, th this is for some specific um, amino acids, so it's uh, just... It is because... for any state function. For example, for potential energy or on, on surface, as I said. If you go from your home uh, to to Pitorochka and back, the overall uh, um, kind of change of um, altitude, how to, how to say, is zero, okay? So your height uh, under the sea level will not change, okay? This okay. means that... Uh, th th does it have some biological implications for some other... So, uh, and first, first do, do I understand correctly that this is for some particular amino acids? So you say pH... I, I don't quite understand pH, A, th, R, what is it? But it's uh, I thought it's uh, some amino acids. No, what is... No, it's just for all. You you take anything, and uh, it's it will be applicable to them as well. It's not the pro probably it's, probably it's a misleading picture, but no, I okay. didn't intend it to uh, okay. say that particular case. One more explanation: If you put something forward and then put it back, so everything is restored, right? So the change on the forward way equals to minus change on the backward okay okay right yeah this this, this is just uh, kind of uh, consequence so it's not the... biology it's, it's just some simple logical yeah. uh, simple logic that in physics uh, is called conservative function and uh, states uh, if the if some function is a state function so it, it depends only on the state only on current coordinates it has this property any any function so potential energy something else so well, for example, the, the molecular functions of the proteins, do we expect some of them depend have similar property or not? But by, by the way, every every change, particularly change of molecular function, will have the same property. So if you have, uh, for example, due to some mutation, you have some um, uh, some disease, if you insert into the ill person into every cell kind of it is not a key because time happened uh, time time process time process so uh so for example for protein okay so uh if you insert if you know that uh, this mutation causes uh, causes disease if you to repair it you you just uh, has to introduce the backward mutation right you you restore the original variant and you will get the get the initial point. That's the logic. This is the same logic as here. Okay, okay. And I have another question. So uh, in last year there was some competition on Kaggle uh, to predict the melting temperature. It was called something like Nova enzymes, Nova enzymes. Uh, so, Nova enzymes. Yeah, yeah. So. Is it related to, to your database or kind of this? Uh, yes. Uh, the uh, melting, the change in the melting temperature in most cases proportional to the uh, delta delta G. That's why when people usually on practice, they predict delta delta G uh, and expect that for instance, this mutation will increase the thermal stability. There are exceptions, but people usually do like this. Uh, and you can uh, basically uh, combat the problem of uh, predicting the thermal stability on the change in uh, uh, melting temperature using delta delta G, uh, not data, but just the delta delta G predictor. 
Yes. That's, that's good. So did, did you incorporate that data set from Kaggle into your database? No, because I uh, was, uh, 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 there was a lot of data and I didn't, uh, in this mega data set, and we didn't uh, have to compile and mix uh, different uh, data sets and types of data. Okay, okay. Thank you. Any other comments, uh, suggestions, uh, questions? Uh, sorry, everyone, uh, no, but I don't know. What do you mean uh, folded and uh, unfolded? Uh, well, proteins uh, have a particular three-dimensional function. Uh, and we denote it as the folded state of the protein in the folded into its structure. Uh, and, uh, and protein is unfolded, uh, for instance, uh, when the three-dimensional structure is gone, uh, it can be uh, done by denaturant like urea, that is a good solvent for proteins or by extremely high, by, by high temperatures, we can disrupt the three-dimensional structure or by some extremely destabilizing mutations that will prevent protein from proper folding. Did I answer your question? Uh, yes, and protein from uh, every protein uh, has one temperature for folded and unfolded. uh one structure or what at what temperatures they unfolded ah di different proteins have uh different uh melting temperature uh, yes and that's uh, uh a task of uh, uh th there is an application for um the application of prediction of melting temperature is uh, designing of the proteins that will work in a harsh environment of uh, high temperatures. So that's why people design this, pre predict melting temperature to introduce mutations that will uh, increase it. Uh, is it depend on uh, what part of cell uh, this protein is or if not depends? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, probably, mm, probably no. Uh, I will. I, I would answer because uh, uh, no. But probably yes because. Uh, but I'm not. Uh, cannot uh, comment on the uh, how it depends. But I think it should. <laughs> But more than you know, <laughs> uh, not not sure about it. Uh, in the alpha fold, there is some characteristic, something like PDLT or PDLT. I don't remember exactly. PDLT, yes. Is it related to delta G or, or not? Uh, well, uh, PLDDT is uh, the uh, lo metrics for uh, local distance difference test. Uh, that is the measure of uh, similarity of protein structures. And uh, you might expect or want sincerely the this metric to be associated with some, uh, have some physical meaning or biological meaning. However, uh, we had uh, work we showed in the paper that um, the PLDDT is not correlated uh, with the delta delta G. It's not associated with it. Uh, and you cannot uh, predict uh, uh, the effect of mutation using the alpha fold metrics uh, out of the box just directly. We actually report uh, here in Sberloga. Mm. 
um, about this. Oh, okay. That, that evening was uh, two reports, my about uh, our, our this research and uh, Artur Zalewski about uh, his research on checking the alpha fold by community. I, I saw in the chat that uh, some uh, people actually uh, adapted alpha fold for predicting uh, the effect of mutations and they are now preparing the manuscript. Uh, so let's see what's there. But directly it was shown by us and uh, later by others that uh, they, the metrics do not correlate. Yeah, uh, so Dmitry, uh, just maybe I do not remember correctly your presentation. It was maybe two years ago. I thought that your result was something like uh, alpha fault is not predicting correctly some uh, foldings which are not very stable. Or, or, or I misunderstand something. Actually, it is the question to Marina as well, because Marina was, is the first author of that publication. So uh, actually, change of uh, PLDDT uh, does not reflect change in free energy. So based on change of PLDDT, so so how 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 you do the experiment? You predict the structure of uh, mutant protein by alpha fold. By wild type protein by uh, of uh, by alpha fold, and uh, you subtract uh, PLDT matrix uh, from each other, and based on this change of PLDT values, you this does not help you to predict uh, the change of protein stability due to mutation. Actually, if it would, uh, we uh, had uh, an explanation. So, <clears throat> for example, the lower the confidence of alpha fold in the predicted uh, in the predicted piece of structure. This means that the lower chances for this piece of structure to be folded. And actually, this logic was <clears throat> used when uh, predictions of uh, PLDDT metrics of alpha fold was used to correlate with uh, natively disordered uh, regions, if I remember correct. Um, however, it is not correlated. So, okay, okay, mm -hmm. thank you. And and uh, based on the internal representations, so probably this. I don't, I'm not sure. There was some paper uh, where people went deeply in, into alpha fold um, kind of under the hood. And um, they, if you believe them, so they constructed some, some stuff that correlates well with, uh, what does mean well on the level of 50-60%? The same that we have by other predictors. Okay. So if even if they constructed the function from internal pieces of internal representations of alpha fold, this uh, kind of does not outperform uh, the current uh, best predictors. And with alpha fold, of course, we hope that we hope that uh, there will be over um, kind of overtaken, right? Uh, so if, so if, alpha, if alpha fold uh, solves the problem, this means that it is solved by at least ninety percent, right? Okay. Uh, so. This delta delta G, it's experimentally, it's possible to check uh, how difficult are these exper experiments and, uh, you know. Uh, Marina, would you like to answer? Sorry for. The difficulty, uh, uh, I actually mm, no, don't, no, don't know how much. I, 
Because I, I, I can. So Dmitry is uh, uh, acquainted with those people who measure this experimental effect. Yeah. So um, this is a very kind of uh, a lottery. So your protein with which you work uh, must be soluble. Must be. Must be. Uh, so. So let, let's uh, look at the uh, stages of uh, protein purification. First, you put into E. coli cells uh, plasmids encoding your protein, and in other cells encoding your mutant protein with the mutation inserted. After that, uh, it... Uh, expresses the protein you you disrupt the cells uh, however here you have to purify you have to clean uh, so so that you have to have only your proteins uh, only the protein you are interested in and this is uh, very difficult so sometimes it, it aggregates sometimes you have to extract them from inclusion bodies, so-called inclusion bodies. And uh, this is kind of lottery. If you succeed, it is it is good. So that's why people, uh, for example, to study general principles of protein folding, they try to, to use those proteins that are easily uh, Purifiable and easily cultivated, uh, not cultivated, cultivated the wrong word. So, uh, for for which previous researchers uh, already showed that uh, those proteins uh, is feasible to 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 purify and to get in needed amounts, right? I suppose the procedure of determining the uh delta delta g itself is probably not that uh hard to, compared for instance uh, to obtaining crystal for x-ray for subsequent structure determination uh because you uh, track the protein unfolding uh, using denaturant or whatever and measure signal and that should be not uh, super hard however uh, to obtain the protein, it's uh, what is limit limitation is uh, purified uh, protein in uh, sufficient amount as uh, in any task for which you need uh, purified protein. Yeah, right. So the most difficulties are for uh, getting the protein at hand. Okay, so uh, to calculate, if you have some pu purified protein, to, call, to collate delta G is not that much big problem, but the problem is to make a mutant and to purify a mutant from not mutant. Is it correct or, or no? no? No, no, to get the wild type and to get mutant. So getting protein protein so 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 that you have a tube of uh Eppendorf with uh, your protein solution this is the main problem after uh, you for example if we have something like uh, i don't know uh, from one organism uh, from the human for example and from the mouse and uh, we know that there are some proteins which are very similar but the difference is for example in one position is it okay then uh, is the problem solved or not? Oh, I didn't get the question, Marina. If you did, no, I, I mean, from the what, mouse what? and from the human, we, we have lots of similar proteins yes, from coded by the same gene, but some of them may be different in just one position. You can think it's a kind of mutation, yes. Well, probably if they are similar from, from different organisms, it's the same protein, uh, then it, it we would not expect much change uh, in stability. Probably it will be just a neutral uh, variation because it exists in the protein. Such protein exists. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions, suggestions, comments? Uh, uh, can you say about uh, uh, mutation that uh, um, when uh, new spices uh, created? When new what created? Sorry. Uh, uh, when some uh, when this mutation then uh, can live and it's uh, I, I don't know <laughs> no it. Uh, uh, sorry, I still didn't get. Prob you probably can ask in Russian and I. Uh, no, если эта мутация она создает новый вид и он дальше существует. Well, good for them, uh, but the problem is, uh, the, the, uh, the question is uh, about the stability or, well, that's, uh, I, I, I can't understand the context, uh, how it's, uh, how it's uh, related to the task of predicting the stability or defining the stability. If I have to, uh, if I change one, uh, uh, in protein, I change one uh, piece, and uh, if this piece is uh, has main role, and uh, it's uh, like um, um, yeah, I probably get what you mean, but uh, this is like the context of evolution. It doesn't uh, probably well, probably. If, when the new species evolve, if I understood correctly, if uh, mutations occur and uh, if the pro if the mutation result in this such destabilizations of protein uh, is non-functional, it disrupts function and stability and then function, for example, and uh, the evolved species is uh, less fit and uh, so on and so forth, probably, uh, in this uh, scenario, we can associate uh, uh, this uh, evolvement and stability, but indirectly, if I understood the question correctly. And by one mutation, by, by one single mutation, you cannot obtain new species because yeah sure but i thought it is yeah. just uh... yeah it's answer to maybe part of the answer of the question because the mr so so i didn't get the question as well however so normally uh species uh two, two different species uh differ from each other by many many mutations uh, for example um, and if you have less mutations, then it is still the same species. For example, um, human and chimpanzee, they differ by 1% of uh, genome. And uh, humans, uh, on average, between each other, they uh, differ by 0.1% of genome something like that or zero zero one i don't remember sorry so okay thank you very much uh any other questions suggestions comments okay maybe we can finish for today uh thank you very much again marina dmitry very nice work so Yes, thank you, Alexander, for inviting, and thank you for the questions. Okay, yes, so hopefully you can develop further and uh, succeed with all your uh, future plans. Thank Wish you success in all this. Very interesting. Okay, so, and uh, uh, good evening uh, to everybody, and I think uh, tomorrow uh, the, the video records will be on YouTube. And uh, I'll send the links uh, to our telegram groups okay thank you very much thank you bye bye everybody bye thank you